Hey there, my name is Anthony Romano, and I'm going to tell you in this video the top five keto bodybuilding supplements that you should really be using, especially for somebody who's trying to do, it doesn't matter if you're doing a cut, it doesn't matter if you're doing a keto bulk, either way, if you want to get the best of both worlds, use these supplements and use them wisely. Okay, so keto bodybuilding is a huge topic on my channel. It's probably my favorite topic on this channel, but my page deals with all sorts of personal optimization, brain optimization, and keto plays very well into that. So I've used almost every supplement you can use. I've used almost every supplement as it applies to keto, as it applies to overall health and wellness, and I've been doing keto for eight years and coaching people all throughout that time. So you're not going to find a more experienced resource than myself on YouTube and I encourage you to subscribe and like the video because I'm going to give you a boatload of knowledge in this one. But I'm trying to make this one quick because I want to hammer through a couple key supplements. And it's also midday, I just finished my first job, I'm going to film a video, get a workout in, and then go to my second job. So right now I'm doing my third job, <laughs> but hopefully this will be, you know, taking over that second job more. So let's get into the first one. Okay, the first one, these are the, you know, I'm going to give you a couple up front because these are the ones you're probably already expecting. Creatine, BCAs slash EAAs, essential amino acids. And I'm not going to throw in whey protein on that one. I'm just going to say creatine. So either of these, I use both occasionally, depending on what my goals are at the time. Creatine monohydrate and creatine hydrochloride. Okay, and an essential amino acid and BCA complex. So links to these products in the description, but I'm gonna to explain to you why these ones are the best. So for starters, right, creatine hydrochloride and monohydrate, what are the differences? What are they gonna actually give you? Well, in the bodybuilding context, creatine is gonna allow you to get more ATP, which is energy and water in your muscles so that you can effectively perform better. When you can push more, you can break down more, and then you can build more. So that's the general gist of creatine. It also has some nootropic purposes, so brain cognitive enhancing purposes, because it helps you create more ATP. So that's a rundown on creatine, but overall, it is massive, okay? You will notice a difference. You will get a little bit more water retention with monohydrate. Hydrochloride creatine is a luxury creatine. It's a little bit newer, only been out for a few years. This is the stuff that's been around for decades. And essentially, when you use these, you know, you have to be very consistent with monohydrate. There's a myth that you have to load with it and take like five times the dose. You don't have to do that. You just have to be consistent with hydrochloride. You have the added luxury that you can be lazy if you want to and basically take this on days where you need it most. So training, recovery, those days only. So the cost can kind of balance out that way. I, I only use naturally sweetened items. If anything's not naturally sweetened or if it contains fillers, I will let you know. These items do not, they're unflavored. That is why I have them linked in the description as the best priced creatines, the best quality creatines. And funny enough, I've been through almost every creatine you can get through. These are generally the best costs. Monohydrate is always gonna be very cheap to produce. Hydrochloride, there's a lot of patenting issues. So if you want a good hydrochloride, get the one that I've linked down below. But let's get on to the other one you were probably expecting before I get to the curveballs, which is BCA slash EAAs, so essential amino acids. I personally love this brand, Athletic Alliance. The reason I promote them is not because I get paid by them or anything. I just truly love their products and I've grown a relationship with some of the people from this company because I just bought so much of their stuff. So they're a Canadian company, so if you're not in Canada, you might not have as easy access to them. Still linking some of their products in the description through other sites. but. Actually, wait, I think they're coming to America, actually, so the, the States. But here's the thing. The deal with these guys is they do everything luxury quality, and they do everything clean. So natural sweeteners, no fillers, nothing. Bare bones, what you see is what you get. So if you've watched my other supplement videos, you know that I have a huge beef with 90% of the big supplement companies, especially the most popular ones that you know, and you've probably used yourself have so many fillers and so many artificial dyes and hydrogenated oils and so many other ingredients that are meant to trick you into finding something to taste very good. And that's a problem. These guys are honest and they're upfront. So here's the deal. I personally love this BCA because it has a lot of other stuff in there that 
you don't really need. Like example, glutamine, glucosamine for joints, a couple antioxidants like N-acetylcysteine, and of course they have a hydration complex, so that's gonna play out later in some of the other recommendations, but you have essential aminos and branch chain aminos. So why do you even want those in the first place? And why am I encouraging you to get a product that has a combination of all of them? Typically with BCAs, companies will compete based on what is in there besides the BCAs. So a lot of times you'll just see branch chain aminos and then you'll have you know some electrolytes in there or maybe you'll have just some glutamine in there, some citrulline for pump. But I encourage you, even if you don't get the ones I'm linking down below, get one that has a complete mix because you're gonna save a lot of money that way. And the reason you want the essential amino acids and not just the BCAs is because they assist the BCAs in actually doing their function. What is the BCA's function? To instigate muscle growth on their own. So if you're somebody who is, you know, diving deeper into keto knowledge, you might have heard that you don't need BCA's on keto. Well, here's the deal. Ketones themselves are structurally similar to branched chain amino acids, and they have anti-catabolic mechanisms to them. But the net result is that when you have a ketogenic diet or ketosis or ketones in your body through supplements, you will have less muscle breakdown. But that's not why I'm recommending these. I'm recommending these because leucine in particular, the BCA, can instigate muscle growth through a muscle building pathway called mTOR. Okay, mammalian target of rapamycin is what it's called. And this is your primary muscle building controller in your body. So it's the primary anabolic controller basically. And when we're talking about growing in a keto context, if you combine creatine in either one of these forms, or if you're, you know, have it in your pocket to dish out, you know, cheap price on monohydrate and hydrochloride, you can do that as well. And you'll notice big improvements, but, and then you throw in a BCA in there, a good quality essential amino and branch chain amino acid in there, you are going to have higher rates of muscle protein synthesis. And this is what actually causes muscles to grow. You can watch my video on 99 Nine, 999% more protein synthesis slash 10 times percent, 10 times the protein synthesis if you want to learn about this because basically you need more amino acids available in your bloodstream to actually build muscle and having the essential amino acids will aid in that goal and even though you don't need to have them to avoid wasting your own muscle, it's a benefit as far as gym performance and I should have led with this, soreness. You will have far less soreness if you have BCAs in place. So that is BCAs. The third one is going to be, hey, one additional detail here, just because somebody asked me this question while I was filming the video and I saw it pop up, but didn't really read it. So essentially, people are worried about the insulin raise that occurs when you have BCAs or leucine, particularly from a BCA supplement. It does cause an insulin rise. A spike is a bit of a stretch, but I'm sure I've called it a spike in previous videos. When insulin is raised from leucine, it's not problematic. You need insulin to grow, but when you're cutting and in a deep fat loss phase, you don't want insulin to be jacked up. So the obvious conclusion is don't have leucine or BCAs while you're fasting or doing cardio or something like that. But if you're somebody who is doing a ketogenic diet and you're worried about raising your insulin, time it after workouts, time it with a meal if your goal is building muscle, okay? If your goal is fat loss, you don't really need the BCAs in that sense especially not to protect you from muscle degradation, you need it more so as a soreness preventer. So leucine, the insulin spike is not gonna be a problem. You have to realize sugar and fructose particularly are going to cause way higher insulin raises. So don't worry about getting insulin resistant or something like that from BCAs and leucine. Digestive enzymes. So we're starting to get to the curveballs. My 10 times protein absorption video is primarily based around enzymes, particularly the enzymes that are directed at breaking down proteins, protease. But this one, basically, what, besides the enzymes directed at protein, you also want the ones directed at fat and other foods like lactose dairy, okay? Because then if you have enzymes that break down the food, the muscle building benefit is that you have now higher rates of amino acids that actually make it into your bloodstream. So even though you know, this doesn't guarantee you're going to have, you know, muscle growth and you don't even have to train for it. If you're training and you have higher concentrations of amino acids in your blood, you will have more muscle growth. Okay. What really matters for muscle growth is how optimized your body is to absorb protein. That's why people who are on steroids, their endocrine system is optimized to have higher rates of muscle protein synthesis. So if you're somebody who's trying to get more, then simply what you should do is try to optimize how many amino acids actually make it there, okay? 
without messing with your hormones, you can't up how quickly you go through protein. But if you have more there, then, you know, even if your body stays at its same rate of protein synthesis, you have more people get into the door. Does that make sense? So digestive enzymes are great for protein, but they're also good for breaking down fats and other foods you're eating. Okay. You're going to have way smoother digestion with this. And you know, realistically, it's great for people to have when they're having carbs in their diet, but people who are doing keto benefit from this greatly too, because you need the lipase enzyme to actually break down fats, okay? Especially from your meals, you're going to have way smoother fat loss with this as well and satiety from your meals. So that one, now we're getting to the fun ones, okay? We're getting to the flashier ones and I'm trying to wrap this up very quick. So I'm trying not to pause, but the last ones are electrolytes, certain ones in particular, magnesium, potassium, and sodium. And ketones. So I'm going to start with ketones first because they're the cooler option here. But ketones themselves are a literal keto cheat code. Not to be confused with the book I'm writing, Keto Cheat Codes, which you should definitely, you know, stay tuned for. But, and the other ones I'm writing, Keto Pro Start, the Keto Starter Guide. But this is a keto cheat code, okay? When you take this stuff, it puts ketones into your body. So even though you didn't make them, your body's going to use them and it will be in the ketogenic state. So... Essentially, for newbies, this makes adaption way easier. This gets rid of all the symptoms. For people who are coming back from a carb weekend, this puts you in, keto in ketosis back the next day. And for people who are, even if you're an experienced keto dieter, you have plenty to benefit from by boosting your de depth of ketosis. You're basically going to the deep end of the pool when you take these, and you get all the benefits associated with ketosis. You get massive appetite suppression massive i have a video on this because these are the best appetite suppressant okay and you also get better cognitive fluidity okay better mental focus essentially and you also get an energy boost because ketones in high quantities is going to make you have higher energy so physical performance and in the gym as well you get this sort of vasodilating effect a better pump and part of the reason that is is because of the potassium so these ketone supplements okay there's two kinds but there's only really one on the market at this point in time, so I'm going to explain that. Ketone salts. These are ketones, which are highly acidic, and they're attached to electrolytes to lower their pH so that you can actually consume them. So those electrolytes, sodium, potassium, magnesium, and if you get a high-quality one, again, like Athletic Alliance, this brand I just love, then they'll have a full electrolyte complex in here, which is beneficial because the next two supplements are electrolytes. Well, the next three, basically, they're electrolytes. And if you get a good ketone supplement, like this one linked below, you know, you'll have those in combination with the ketones. This is the ultimate one-two punch. Really, ketones are a haymaker in themselves, and then you have an uppercut with the electrolytes. So big, big, powerful stuff right here. But the main reason why you also get other benefits from those electrolytes, okay? So magnesium and potassium, but I'm going to start with potassium. Potassium is responsible for a hydrating effect, and also in your muscles, there's a pump that actually allows you to get better blood flow and essentially a better pump in the gym by filling up the muscles with potassium. So when you consume potassium, right, I have actual potassium supplements I use, but the easiest way to do it is when you have potassium and electrolytes already in a product. So in my BCAs, my EAAs, and my ketones, right, they already have appropriate electrolytes in there potassium being one of them. This is going to benefit you greatly in the gym and you will notice this. This is going to provide a better pump, especially if you combine it with a solid, you know, pre-workout or something basic that you already might be using. You will have a gnarly pump, I promise you. And this is key for people getting into keto bodybuilding because a lot of them at first have to sort of tiptoe around things because they aren't as good at training in a fat metabolism. Their body is used to carbs and your body has to learn how to make its own carbs by getting keto adapted. So hopefully that makes sense. But potassium benefits you greatly in that department. And so does sodium. But for people on keto, potassium is the one everybody overlooks. Okay. And when we're getting to magnesium, okay. Magnesium, I take so many magnesiums. I love them because there's different benefits to different forms of magnesium. I'm not going to get into that now. But literally, I have a zinc magnesium complex. They market these as testosterone support, but it's basically essential minerals. This one's my favorite Z ZMA because it simply has a load of other minerals. And one thing you have to keep in mind, whenever you're supplementing with any mineral or electrolyte, okay? Supplementing with one electrolyte by itself, okay, in isolation, 
depletes your stores of other electrolytes. So you have to be careful because if you supplement with just sodium, it's going to deplete your levels of potassium. If you supplement with potassium, it's going to deplete your levels of magnesium. Okay, and there's this whole snowball effect that occurs that's why it's best to supplement with all the electrolytes at once in particular ratios. What those ratios are is not really too important for you to know, but the products I've lifted, listed have those ratios in the appropriate dosages. So even if you're buying an electrolyte supplement on its own, I have some linked as well, but essentially if you're buying any electrolyte supplement, even if you don't get the ones that I like and think are the best, make sure that there is multiple in there, okay? And you know, if you wanna Google and search which ones have the best ratios, that's fine, but never get just one on its own. People will supplement with just salt or just potassium salt, right? That's going to deplete your stores of other electrolytes, which is a big problem on keto, especially for bodybuilding and how your muscles feel. So magnesium relaxes the central nervous system. It has digestive softening. It benefits as well. And it does actually relax your muscles. Okay. It's necessary. So different forms of it have different benefits. Like some are better for focusing. Some are better for relaxing, particularly one called magnesium glycinate, but I have like four magnesium supplements just right here, okay? I have this Mag Enhance one, which has a couple different forms. I use this one for relaxing or staying focused. My ZMA one, this is just my, my base, you know, getting the essential minerals. And then I also have the CBD product I loved, which I made a video on, Chill. These are the chill pills, okay? Love these things. They also have magnesium in them amongst a, bun a bunch of other herbal remedies and CBD itself. So the non-psychoactive component of cannabis which is anti-inflammatory and has a lot of other benefits. You can watch that video, link in the description for this guy as well. But I take magnesium in a bunch of other products, even this Cordy Balance one, it's just a sleep supplement, basically with melatonin and theanine, tryptophan, and magnesium glycinate. So the one that's geared at relaxing. So you need these balancers, okay? You need potassium for that extra pump, you need magnesium to relax the muscles. These are key and they will benefit you greatly in recovery. So last one I'm gonna say, I should have said this one first, but I'm saying it last because this is something that everybody should be taking, okay? Fish oil, okay? I say okay a lot, but I don't care. Fish oil and cod liver oil. So I'm ending the video off and I don't care that it's going late because this is important. Fish oil, EPA, DHA are the oil of your body. If you are a car, this is the oil, okay? Which reminds me, I gotta get an oil change for my car, literally. <laughs> it told me yesterday. But this is the stuff that you need to have everything run smooth in your body. Your brain is made a little more than half of EPA, DHA. Actually, I think that's just DHA, which is the omega-3 fatty acids, right? That's what I'm talking about here. So that the anti-inflammatory fats, that is what omega-3s are. Omega-6s are the inflammatory fats, okay? And the reason I'm saying cod liver oil is because it contains vitamin A and vitamin D as well. And those are very important, but those things are important for everybody. Okay, perhaps I'll make a video in the future on supplements that everybody should be taking. Vitamin D is one of the ones you should absolutely be taking. Same with the B complex for most people. But overall, fish oils as well, this is gonna smoothen out the joints, eyes, cardiovascular system, brain. When I was a kid, I was sick in some ways and I was very fortunate that my mom got me taking these, so I'm personally biased in that way. And I tell people that story often, but it's true. So even your grandparents were probably taking cod liver oil when they went to their grandmother's house and stuff like that. So these are the supplements, okay? I'm gonna go over them one more time just so you know. Creatine, essential amino acids and BCAs are optimal. And we also have ketone supplements themselves. Those are a cheat code. They will minimize a lot of symptoms, make everything run smoother. Digestive enzymes, those are gonna help absorb more protein, break down more fat, and have a smoother adaption to the physical eating component of your diet. And then we have electrolytes. So sodium, magnesium, potassium, but the ones I spoke about here are magnesium, potassium. Sodium is gonna be a hydrator mainly. Magnesium and potassium are gonna play a large role in muscle repair and overall how you feel in your body and your energy levels because you need those. And when you start a keto diet, typically, you know, if you're new, your body has to take some time to adapt. So you wanna take those things like training wheels, okay? That's it for the video, okay? Subscribe, like, follow me on Instagram, go to my website, romanoketo.com. I got products dropping soon and coaching and consulting. Leave a like and ask me some questions. I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you very much. Anthony Romano. Peace.